Hi everyone, I'm Nicole David and I'm a former World Squash Champion and I've represented Malaysia for more than 20 years. I'm really excited to be here sharing on this TEDx Sunway University session with all of you. Today, I'll be talking about the secret to lasting consistency. Many have asked me about how I could sustain at the top of my game for such a long time. Usually questions like, how did you do it? What kept you motivated to keep on winning? Or how do you handle it all? Or the pressure to be at world number one during your career? Well, now that I'm retired from playing squash professionally, I could actually reflect on my career and have more time to understand it better myself. So I'd like to share with all of you the secret to my success. But before I go into it, let me tell you a little bit more about my story. I was born in Penang in 1983, and I'm the youngest of three girls in the family. My dad, Desmond, was a civil engineer, but he was also a sports person himself, and used to play football for Malaysia and hockey and athletics for Penang State. I'm pretty sure the sports genes came from him and also the competitive age too. My mom, Anne-Marie, was an English art and geography teacher in a Chinese boys' school. She was super patient to put up with the boys for over 20 years, but she definitely needed more patience to put up with me. The most hyper kid you can possibly meet. And all I wanted to do is run around everywhere and climb up things if I see an opportunity. So when I was five years old, the first public squash center was built in Penang by my dad's friend. At the time, I was way too small to play squash because the racket was far too big for me. So my sisters had lessons first while I followed them and sat outside the court watching in. The minute I saw them playing the game in their first lesson, I was so intrigued by the sport and I made a point to ask my dad straight away to sign me in too. Somehow, he managed to get me an old wooden racket cut it into half and handmade it specially for me so I could join in the lessons with my sisters. The first time I stepped foot on the squash court and started hitting the ball with my special racket, I just loved every moment of it and I fell in love with squash from then on. I was dreaming about squash. I would wait for my school day to be over to play squash and I just played squash all day, every day and before you know it, I got better and better at it. I was selected to join the national team at 11 years old. I started to improve a lot in tournaments nationally and internationally, but eventually the results came. When I was 14 years old, I had a breakthrough and I won my first Asian senior title. It was an open age group event, so I was playing opponents that were twice my age and even still managed to beat them. I was so thrilled to win that title that it spurred me on to train harder and push myself more. A year later, I won my first World Junior title and at the time, I was the first ever female athlete in Malaysia to have ever won a world title. So I was really proud of that achievement. From then on, I continued to work harder and two years later, I won my second World Junior title in my hometown, Penang. It was such an amazing experience to win that title at home, in front of my family, my friends, and the Malaysian supporters all around. After that win, it gave me more reason to make my decision to become a professional squash player after that. I also had my mindset to be world number one and being world champion in the seniors one day. When I was 17 years old, straight after high school, I went out and played the pro tour. I had a year on tour and I did really well to break into the top 16 in the world within one year. However, I noticed I needed to do more to play against the top players and as they were very experienced, I knew very quickly what to do to beat me. So a year later, I decided to leave Malaysia and move to Amsterdam to work with my professional coach, Deserving. I wanted to train with the best to be the best I can be. She knew what it takes to compete with the top women on tour. 
I have to say, this is the best decision I ever made in my squash career. She told me the first thing when I started training with her was that it will take time and lots of patience to make these changes, but I was willing to commit to it. Basically, I had to change my approach to training completely. We corrected my technique, made my movement more efficient, learned better tactics, tactics to match up to the top pros, get stronger physically and mentally too. It was certainly a process that was not easy at all, but I kept to it without missing a day of training. I had many, many tough moments in the process, but I got through those obstacles and came out reaching my goal eventually. I became world number one and world champion all by the age of 22. Also, from then on, I went on to win eight world titles and sustain world number one for nine years consecutively and it's a record in squash history. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever imagined achieving this in my entire life. So, we've come to the moment of truth. What is the secret to lasting consistency? Well, the secret to my success is improvement. I have always wanted to keep improving myself and making sure I continue to learn and grow in every possible way. Here is the actual meaning of what improvement means and I found it from the dictionary. Here it says, the process of making something better or of getting better. Even when I got to world number one, I knew there were areas I needed to work on to get better and at the same time, I never thought to myself that this is it, I'm set now. Also, I didn't want to have any areas where my opponent could attack me or find any form of weaknesses when I was competing. So I was constantly making sure I got better in all aspects of my game. So I had to create a solid support team around me that was focused on their roles to help me improve and get better while refining my game at every step of the way. I had my coach, my sports physiotherapist, my sports psychologist and the sports institute to set up my training schedule and my programs with my physical trainers. It was all about improving on the small details and by doing so, I could continue to get better and stay on top of the pack with the rest of the players on tour. Throughout my time at world number one and my entire career, I never once felt that I was entitled to anything in my life. I'll say this again. I never once felt that I was entitled to anything in my life. One of the key things to remember when you want to reach your goals and improve yourself is to never ever feel comfortable. If you have something set that you're wanting to go for, you can't get comfortable. It's, it is very easy to just settle, but if I fell in this trap, I would be starting to make excuses that will not help me improve or get better in any way. It just doesn't work. So if you want to go somewhere and do something better in your life to reach your goals, if you get comfortable, you won't go anywhere. Basically, you'll, have, you'll stay put and not move further to pursue anything more for yourself. One of the biggest things to keeping you on track is to have a strong mindset, which I call the strongest mindset. As an athlete, we work on our minds a lot and it certainly applies to everyone on how to take on their daily lives. This strongest mindset is what we practice as an athlete, so I'd just like to share the six points that makes a strongest mindset. Number one, focus on the details. I mentioned before to focus on the small details to improve yourself. My coach told me to make these small goals and if I could reach them, then I'll only get better to reach the bigger, bigger goal. So I would say to work on the small details and when you work on them, it gets, gets you to where you want to go. Number two, have a vision. As you heard from my story, I always had a vision in mind and that was to be world number one and world champion. I went to Amsterdam with that in mind, but it doesn't mean I knew what I, I would be doing. Just knowing what I could see or visualize it in my mind helped me to prepare and plan myself towards it somehow. If you can't see it, 
you can't reach it. Number three, look around you. Competition is everywhere and it's the, it is the best thing. I honestly learned so much from my opponents throughout my career. If it wasn't for my competitors pushing me to get better, I wouldn't be where I am today. So don't fear competition. Embrace it and learn from those around you. Number four, be willing to do it a million times until you get it right. I feel that we don't give ourselves a chance to even try things. Before we even start or even want to get through things, we just quit. I had to change a lot of things when I moved to Amsterdam and I had to keep doing everything a million times till I got it right and kept to the plan. If you have a plan, stick to it and be willing to work hard at it if you want it to work for you. Number five, listen to others, even if you don't want to hear it. I had moments at tournaments when I had a really bad match and the day after I had to go through what happened with my coach. She would be asking me questions and we will be going through what went wrong to find out how we can overcome it if it happens again. I hated the fact that I needed to listen to it, but it was the only way I could learn better about myself. The best, best, best learnings we were when I lost and that, the, that I learned the most. So be open to listen to others because it's the most important thing to do. Number six, don't think you know it all. It, all, it also comes with being open to listening. If you think you know everything, you won't take anyone's opinion, opinions and advice. We can be at any level in what we do, but there is always space to learn without putting anyone down. We are not the only ones that know things. Others do as well. So be willing to let your guard down and not feel threatened if others have an opinion to share. All these that I've shared with you is important to build the strongest mindset. This worked for me, but you can also try and practice it out yourself as it applies to everyone. Another thing that has made me the person I am today is to be humble. The more successful you are, the, the more successful you are, the most humble you should be. My mom was always an example to us growing up. She was the best to everyone and would show lots of gratitude with the people she is around. When I was competing, she would tell me that it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, as long as you are a good person, that's all that matters. I carry this with me through, all throughout my career until now, and I feel this is the best thing to have in life. The way we treat others is how we will be treated back in return. I like to finish with a saying that I always share, and that is, being world number one, you have to gain it every day. You have to make an effort each day in whatever you do to become a better friend, boss, teacher, or student and make every day count. Don't take anything for granted and make the most of each day of your life. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed my sharing today. Take care. Bye.